Siobhan Sarna here. Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Allison Seebecker is also going to be revealed shortly if you can't see her yet. And the reason that we've gathered is to talk about the nine step protocol or algorithm for treating SIBO that she has successfully used to treat thousands and thousands of patients. She is an award-winning naturopath doctor. She is a SIBO patient herself. She is in hiatus right now. Is it hiatus? Is that what they call it when you don't get paid? <laughs> right. It, w w I, it would be called sabbatical if you're being paid. So right. <laughs> I'm on uh, unpaid leave from, uh, from clinic rotation. Um, I'm still teaching. I, I'm a professor. I teach. Uh, so I, I do that. But mostly it's, I had a lot of projects I needed to finish, uh, like my course for professionals. Of course, we have the course for patients. And I'm in the middle of writing my book, nearing nearing completion so yes so yeah very excited and um also my book is we just got the first round of edits from random house so i'm very excited very excited she liked it the editor liked it oh i loved it great oh, thank you dr c yep. i appreciate it um <laughs> so very exciting that we're going to continue our mutual mission of getting the word out to the world which is so very very important to us and you're part of that, everybody, for being here. So fantastic. Okay. I want to also say this, so in case I don't forget, yeah, I don't want to forget this. This webinar is free, and we're thrilled you're here, as I've already expressed. We are going to be talking about that nine-step algorithm. Also, in full disclosure, we are launching another semester of the SIBO Recovery Roadmap course that Dr. C. Becker and I developed to help people do it themselves and work with our practitioners. It is one of our biggest prides and joys. And we have had so many people email us, write us, talk about how it is a proven method for working with your SIBO. You do not have to buy it. I'm just telling you it's available for sale and we're going to give you an extra special discount because you're here live. It is a hundred dollars off, but there's going to be something that you'll be glad you were here live for. Um, that this is not a bait and switch webinar. We're thrilled to have you and you're going to learn so much. And if you want to join us in the course, we'd be thrilled to. And there's a live Q&A component, component of the course. And if not, that's cool too. So sit back, relax, take a deep breath, grab your pen and paper if you haven't already, take some great notes. And uh, it does work for people who, yeah, long distance, this is virtual guys, and it's on demand. So um, the course is going to be available to anyone who wants immediate access to it. It's not like you have to wait right? Or do you? No, you don't have to wait. We used to do it like that, but we changed it based on how we wouldn't want to wait for it, <laughs> right? Okay. So Dr. C. Becker, um, I wanted to, I need to pull something up. So do you want to just chat about something briefly that we did last week that you oh, and yeah. week that we got oh, so much out of? It was wonderful. Earlier this week, um, Siobhan was uh, scheduled to have a, a research update interview with Dr. Pimentel and spontaneously D um, invited me to join <laughs> um, because uh, you know I, I pour through all the, the research and I had read all of the um, research that Dr. Pimentel had just uh, put forward. Um, every year at this time, there's the, the biggest gastroenterology conference in the world occurs. It's called Digestive Disease Week. And so Siobhan typically always has um, an appointment to interview Dr. Pimentel after that happens so he can you know translate and tell us all in you know common language what is new. And it was just a wonderful time to uh, chat with him. And we are going to be giving, do you want to announce about the... Uh, oh, go ahead. Or, well, uh, we're, we're yeah, going to be... Do it, I will. I will. Uh, read it. Read it we're going to be read giving um, anybody who, who, who does decide to buy the uh, and participate with us in the patient course, we'll be getting that as a bonus, that interview that Siobhan and I did with Dr. Pimentel this week. And people who have already bought the course, you know, it will be posted in there and you will get to see it. So just a couple of, of highlights is uh, from his research this year was that he was able to correlate hydrogen sulfide SIBO, type SIBO, with uh, heartburn, the symptom of heartburn. So there are three symptoms so far that hydrogen sulfide has been correlated with from, from Dr. Pimentel's team diarrhea, abdominal pain, and now heartburn. Now, I, I do just want to mention, if you haven't heard me say this before, that clinically, 
all of the hydrogen sulfide patients that I have seen and treated have had constipation. So it is possible to have either with, with that presentation, with that gas. And by the way, if you don't know, there are three types of SIBO. Uh, there's the hydrogen gas type, that's correlated with diarrhea. Hydrogen sulfide gas, that's correlated with diarrhea and studies, constipation in my clinical experience. And then there's methane gas, and that's correlated with constipation. And that one is getting a new name and potentially new classification. It's going to be called intestinal methanogen overgrowth instead of just SIBO methane because it's caused not by bacteria. Uh, so small intestinal bacterial overgrowth doesn't quite fit. So um, it's archaea. It's a very similar microorganism. So anyway, back to the hydrogen sulfide. We don't exactly know why some people it correlates with constipation, but one way or the other, if a person has heartburn, they have diarrhea, they have abdominal pain, you could be thinking in your mind, hmm, maybe I have hydrogen sulfide gas. And just one more note on that. We don't have testing available for hydrogen sulfide yet. Dr. Pimentel's created this technology that they've been using in their research studies for about three years now. It was supposed to have come out already, but now with um, everything happen happening with coronavirus, um, it's, it's delayed. So we don't know when it'll come out yet, but that's where this research is coming from. And then one other fascinating thing he talked about is that his, um, his team has developed actually a UVA light to be used internally. Uh, they already presented that work last fall uh, for various infections. It could be used for inflammatory bowel disease. It could be used possibly for SIBO. It kills everything he told us, um, bacteria, fungus, and it's very anti-inflammatory. Well, now they've continued their work and um, shown that it works in humans and that it's safe in humans. So very, very interesting. And they're, they're using the same endoscopy, what is that called, Dr. Seebecker? The, end, the scope. endoscope. Endoscope um, that they use to um, pattern the small intestine microbiome, which is so interesting. Um, so it's, it's not there yet in terms of like, is it going to be out next week? But what's the big prize, the Nobel or the Pulitzer that they give to scientists? You mean just the Nobel Prize? Yeah, the Nobel Prize. Is, is that the Nobel Prize? Yeah, I personally think that Dr. Sly <laughs> might be up for the Nobel Prize if this light works. I'm just saying. That'd be amazing. It. Okay, you heard it here first. By the way, many people want, um, have mentioned that Dr. Pimentel should get a prize like that for his work on Absolutely. linking SIBO, um, IBS as bacterial, if bacterial caused and such. Absolutely, which we're going to talk about. Okay. I wanted to also reiterate that this is a moment of hope for you all, for all of us. So this is what Dr. C. Becker and I talked about a couple of years ago. And when I said to her, I want to create a course for people to have the information at their fingertips that took me so long to figure out. The answers are here. The testimonials are here. We improve this information as much as we can with each iteration and based on feedback. This is about the protocol and it's also about you at home. We are here to help you. You're helping yourself, which is that partnership, which is so important. And you're not a victim. Well, I know it's hard to get a hold of that brain concept, right? You absolutely are empowered to take control of your health. And we are here to help save you time, energy, money, and help you with the right information because we know about the rabbit holes of wrong information and also um, pitfalls to avoid. Like making sure when you get your SIBO breath res test results back, you get the numbers. You don't just get positive or negative because not everyone knows how to interpret a SIBO breath test. Like with my experience where I lost 18 months of realizing that I had SIBO, thinking I actually didn't have SIBO because I got a false, not even a false negative, I got a false interpretation of the test, which is maddening. Um, so I come to you with a experience of having those pitfalls. We're gonna save the questions for the end. If there is a little bit um, on the protocol where I want to just highlight something maybe based on people's questions, um, I'll address it, but I don't wanna break Dr. Seebecker's flow. And um, Dr. Seebecker, do you want to go ahead and, oh, I got to say this, if you do want to join us for the SIBO Recovery Roadmap course, we have an extra special discount going on right now that's $100 off. We also have a live Q&A that we're including. And then we also have 
um, because you're here live, a super secret something if you stay till the end. Okay, Dr. C. Becker, are you ready? Do you want to go ahead and bring up the, um, the algorithm? Absolutely. Thank you. One second. Okay, are you seeing it? I do see it. So she's, Dr. C. Becker's gone right to the course and she's gonna be working with some of the, uh, the ideas that are in the course. And yes, I can see it. And hopefully everyone can see it too. And, okay. Yeah, all right. Can you make it a okay. little bigger maybe, Allison? Okay, if I make it bigger, you won't be able to see the full thing. Okay, yep, they're saying that they can see it, that's fine. Everyone can see it. I'll just, I mean, I can make it a little bigger while I talk through the beginning of it, why don't I? Is that okay. better? I think so, yeah, I think so. Okay. I will see it whole at the end. So. Yeah, okay, so this is an algorithm that um, is based on Dr. Pimentel's algorithm that he created for IBS that would have SIBO. And we sent out a free lesson from the, from, uh, the patient course, SIBO Recovery Roadmap, th this week. I don't know that everyone's seen it. It was just brief explaining the basis of the algorithm. So I'm just going to say it again because not everyone will have seen it. But Dr. Pimentel, um, you know, he's, he's the, our main lead researcher in SIBO. He makes, you know, a lot of the discoveries. And as he was working on this, he developed an algorithm for his patients that he used in clinic for about seven years before he published it. So he validated that it worked clinically and also was working on studying various aspects of the algorithm and was publishing studies on various treatments like on the antibiotics, pharmaceutical antibiotics, on the elemental diet, on the prokinetics for prevention, et cetera. And so he was publishing research studies and then eventually sh shared the algorithm so that it's proven and validated. So what myself and my colleague, Dr. Sandberg Lewis did is we just altered it a little bit, adding in some um, aspects from our uh, training and profession as naturopathic physicians and um, adapting it a little bit with our clinical experience. And that's what we wound up with here in this treatment algorithm. And then since then, we've been using it for you know now 10 years and teaching it to all of our students I, I teach um, in medical school, so I teach medical students, and then I teach postgraduate to uh, physicians. And um, I hear back from many of them all the time. And so this is, you know, the very proven method to work through one's SIBO. So the main aspect, let me, let me make it a little bit smaller so that um, you can see the whole thing. The main, the main overarching aspect here is it provides you an organized methodical plan and approach of, of what to do when someone has SIBO or if you're thinking you have SIBO. And I, I just wish everyone had this map in their head. Uh, they can, you know, physicians can alter it as they, as they see the need to, and you as a patient, you know, may take your own twists and turns, but should just have a general concept. So just very briefly, let me give you the sort of overarching outline of it. First of all, you suspect somebody has SIBO because they have symptoms. Then you might try some uh, home remedies or uh, less risky treatments, um, very simple things to see if that doesn't take care of it. You don't even know what a person has at this time. You think, well, they have the IBS symptoms, they have the SIBO symptoms. Now, if that doesn't really take care of it, you then start for your diagnosis, start trying to get a diagnosis. And at this point you do the SIBO breath test to see does somebody have SIBO or not. Of course, you do have to interpret that correctly, as Siobhan mentioned her story. Now, if a person has SIBO, then we move on to our main treatments. So we have three main sort of killing or bacterial reducing treatments, pharmaceutical antibiotics, um, elemental diet, so here I am in the algorithm, and herbal antibiotics. And we also have diet. Now, diet can be used in many different ways. Uh, there's a lot of purpose, purposes you can use it for. But so I've got it here with like a, a sort of a line separating it to indicate it is not a main bacterial reducing treatment. It's supportive in all sorts of ways and you start it at various places, but I've just put it here. Now, when you're done with your um, killing treatments, you move on to holding the gains you've made with the prokinetic and then you assess what happened. And if a person is really better, you move on to prevention. That's over here. If a person is not really better, you, uh, you retest if you can, if you have that ability. I know that can be very difficult and money can be an obstacle, but that would be our best option. 
And one of the main reasons why you want to retest when you still have symptoms is to be sure you still have SIBO because sometimes the uh, SIBO is gone and now your symptoms are there because of some other reason. And likely that reason has been there all along. People have more than thing, one thing wrong with them. And um, that lets you know to start looking for what else is, a, is the problem. So that's over here. What if your SIBO is negative when you, when you, you know, still have symptoms? That's when you need to consider other diagnoses. But what happens most of the time is you're just not finished treating the SIBO. So this is a colonization or an overgrowth, like the name says. It's not technically an infection. Um, and so what that changes in our, in our mind is it's not the kind of thing you can just you know, give two weeks or one week of pharmaceutical antibiotics and it's gone. Now for some people, it does work that way when their SIBO is treated and that's the, those are the miracle cases and those are wonderful. But for most people, absolutely the majority. You need multiple rounds because we're just trying to bring that bacterial load down. And it's just a lot to ask from one round of treatment, one, two, or four week round of treatment. So um, in that case, we just know the person's still positive and we come back up and we treat again. And this big arrow here saying treat again is very, very important for everybody to know, patients and, and uh, practitioners. Because what often can happen is if a, if a practitioner doesn't know that or a patient, they can say, well, I treated my SIBO, they did one treatment, and it didn't, it didn't work. So, you know, either SIBO is a bunch of hooey or that treatment doesn't work, or they'll say, I'm a tough case. I'm a chronic tough case. When all it was was they had one of maybe four rounds that they needed they just began. They've just begun, but they think they're done. So that's why it's extremely important to know about this uh, multiple rounds we need. And then the very last thing is, what if a person relapses? So the, um, the general uh, statistics show about a third of SIBO cases are not chronic. Whether it takes one round in the miracle way I just described that we all wish we could be, or four rounds or five rounds, who knows, to get your test negative, your symptoms uh, mostly gone, they will not relapse. So that's it. It's done. You're done treating now. And that's the one third of cases. So the minority, the majority of cases, two thirds will relapse. It's chronic relapsing. And so down here, we have indicated that. What if you're all better over here and then you relapse? What do you do? Well, that's when you need to start trying to figure, in, figure out what is causing your SIBO. Something is always causing the SIBO. We don't need to worry about it that much if we're able to resolve the SIBO, never to come back again. It doesn't really, we don't really need to know. But if it's relapsing, we need to know uh, what's causing it because that's how we're going to fix the relapses. If we can remove the underlying cause, if we can figure out what it is, and if it's treatable, there are many in currently incurable underlying causes of SIBO. Like Siobhan was mentioning Ehlers-Danlos, that's genetic, and uh, she has it. She was sharing. That is currently, it's unknown how to cure that or fully resolve that. So that's a long-term thing people live with, and then you learn all sorts of treatments and management techniques to make your life still very happy, productive, and symptom-free. But anyway, we have to figure that out, see if we can remove it, and then we retreat. If you've relapsed, we retreat. So that's the basic overview. And so hopefully you can see, you know, there's general stages. There's um, suspicion and initial treatments. Then there's diagnosis, testing. Then there's treatment, the main antibacterial treatment. After that, there's, once that's all finished, there's prevention. And along the way, there's assessment. And possibly if there's relapse, then there's trying to figure out what the underlying cause is. So you can see the, the basic premise here. Um, so I want to go in now to uh, the part up at the top where we just began, first and second line therapies. So I just want to give you a little bit more detail on some of these aspects of treatment. And of course, the um, patient course we're here to you know, promote today and tell everyone about, SIBO Recovery Roadmap. That's what this whole course is based on. We just go through this algorithm step-by-step step and give you all the details of everything you need to know. So I'm just gonna give you some of these details now. So right up here, first and second line therapies. Um, these are various uh, supplements as well as diet and lifestyle 
things, that, um, treatments that people can try when you don't even know what's wrong with you and you just have the symptoms. And honestly, this is how most people handle things anyway, whether you're a patient, whether you're a practitioner. This is what we do. Before going down the road of all the testing and all the diagnose, uh, diagnoses, we just try some things and see if it helps. Uh, so many, uh, so much of the time it does. So these are things like reducing your stress, cleaning up your diet, um, you know, not eating as much sugar sweets and, and junk, and sometimes even you know, taking out food allergens like dairy, maybe wheat or gluten. These are the kinds of things people try in the beginning. Um, also supplements. So I wanna mention some of the supplements that I think are nice to try as some of your, uh, I call these second line therapies. So first line therapies are diet and lifestyle is just how I'm referring to them. Second line therapy are supplements as well as low risk modalities like acupuncture, body work, you know, all of the wonderful things we can do, homeopathy, things where you don't actually need to have a Western diagnosis, you can still go and get them. And oftentimes they give great relief, great. So one thing to consider for your second line therapies would be bile. Now, I don't usually talk about this very much, which is one of the reasons I wanted to. Um, this wouldn't be suitable for vegetarians. It does come from animals. Usually it's ox bile. Um, and bile you can get by itself, or often it comes complex. And one I like, I have all, I, I took all these supplements from my own house today that I could show you what I have in my cabinet. Here's one I like. It's called Lipotropic Complex by Integrative Therapeutics. And by the way, I don't have any... Um, way I can make money off of any of, any of these supplements I'm showing you. Um, these are just things I use for myself or for patients. Um, there's many different brands. So um, these are just, you know, there's no, what do you call that? Uh, I, I have no, I can't remember what you call that. <laughs> it's like your disclosure. I have no financial ties. Association, to blah, blah. So, yeah. um, so what I like about this lipotropic complex is that it, um, it actually has a lot of other ingredients that help with detoxification through the gallbladder and liver system. And that can help a lot of people with digestive symptoms. So bile can actually help with constipation. I would not recommend bile first off for a diarrhea patient. Sometimes ox bile or bile products can be tolerated by diarrhea patients in low dose, but it wouldn't be the first thing I'd start with. This would be more for if you have just mild, barely intermittent diarrhea, that maybe that'd be all right, and more so for constipation. Did you say the name again? Oh, it's lipotropic. Complex. Yeah, I'll show you. Lipotropic. Lipotropic. Complex. I suppose you could say lipotropic. I just happen to say lipotropic. So this is a nice one. Now, sometimes um, we have people who are, have digestive symptoms. There's a grouping of them that are sensitive. What that means is supplements, medicines, and foods they easily react to. For a sensitive patient, I'm not sure I would immediately start with a product that has all of these ingredients. The reason why is you usually want to, for a sensitive patient, so if you are one, you want to start very simply because if you react to it, if you reacted to something like this, how would you know what it was in here you were reacting to? Because there's a lot of ingredients. So uh, if you're sensitive, maybe start with just plain ox, ox bile if you can find that. But um, Helping detoxification, giving gallbladder support. Um, this also helps with digestion of fat. These are uh, wonderful things to help from a general approach before you know even what's going wrong. Um, by, um, um, not bile, oh, bitters. Bitters is the next one I'm, I wanna mention. Lots of uh, physicians like to start with bitters. Here's one I like. There's so many brands, but here's just one I happen to have right now. It's by, um, Quicksilver Botanicals, Quick, sorry, Quicksilver Scientific, and it's called Bitter X. There are many, many bitters in your local health food store. You'll see Swedish herbal bitters. Uh, this is just a nice brand. And you take these about 10 or 15 minutes before eating. And what it does is it helps improve your hydrochloric acid that's going to be coming out, prepare you for the meal that's about to come. So if you're having symptoms after meals, which is absolutely the definition of SIBO and IBS, the symptoms come from eating. Uh, bitters can be helpful because, um, oh, and by the way, I didn't say when to take the bile, you should take that with your meal. Um, if you took it on an empty stomach, it's possible it could be a little bit aggravating because uh, bile is a strong item. So you take that with your meals. Bitters you take before. It can be hard to remember to take bitters 
15 minutes before you eat. How do you get that timing right? Well, just do your best. When you go out into the kitchen um, or if you're going into a restaurant when all of this coronavirus situation is over, uh, when, you, you know, when you go into the kitchen, take it then. You know, you'll improve your timing as you, keep, as you keep going and go along. If you've forgotten to take it and you're sitting down for your meal, just take it right then. Just, you know, do the best you can. Better to take it than not. So bitters is one of the category that helps with hydrochloric acid secretion before a meal. The other items would be apple cider vinegar and um, just exactly hydrochloric acid in pills. But bitters has a lot of other wonderful benefits. So um, that's, that's a very nice way to go. Something else I like is IgG, um, immunoglobulins. I happen to have this brand with me right now, Microbiome Labs, Mega IgG 2000. And um, I like IgG because it does so many different things. It can help repair leaky gut. It can um, Im improve resistance to bacteria and infection. And it, it can help, um, God, it can just help so many things. So I've written about it in my newsletter multiple times. It's more of an expensive product. So I understand that can be a hard thing to, on faith, try. Uh, I can just tell you my own response is that I, I felt it helped me in so many different ways. It, it helped my skin complexion. My husband took it too. It helped his, you know, like, so for my vanity, I was like, oh yeah, I'm always going to be taking this, you know, <laughs> but it also helped my food um, sensitivities a little bit, my bloating a little bit. It helped my, I have genetic high cholesterol. It helped that. did a lot of things for me. So I do take it every day myself personally. Not everybody feels a benefit. So, you know, but I, it's one I like to recommend these. And again, what I'm talking about are items to try before you've even gotten your diagnosis of SIBO. Now, other, another thing to do that everyone always asks about is probiotics. Uh, this is a fine thing to try uh, ahead of time. They, they help many people. Sometimes they aggravate people, but you just try them and then you'll know one way or the other. Uh, some of the ones that I like now, Dr. Ruscio has a way of talking about it that I like. He puts them into three categories. So he's got um, your basic, your basic uh, lactobacillus bifidus probiotics. Ones like this. Uh, these are just some ones I happen to have in my house. Uh, and then he's got the um, in his categories the Saccharomyces boulardii. That's a probiotic yeast. This is one I happen to have in my house right now. Hey, Dr. Seebecker, they're asking if we can stop screen share, and you can show everything. How about this? When you're done with the, the showing of the bottles individually and talking about them, why don't you just do a quick... I'll just do it right now. Here we go. Okay. So that's the Saccharomyces. And um, here, here's one. Now this, this, this particular probiotic, these, again, these are just things I happen to have in my house. Uh, oftentimes I've gotten them as samples. Um, this particular one brings up an interesting point. I do not generally recommend people with, when we're suspecting or wondering if we have SIBO or if we have SIBO, that we take probiotics with prebiotics because prebiotics are fiber intended to feed bacteria. And these are very highly fermentable items. They're high FODMAP and they tend to aggravate SIBO patients. So in the beginning, I would start, if you're going to use a probiotic, I'd use one without a probiotic, I'm sorry, a prebiotic as a main ingredient listed with a milligram amount. But it is okay to try ones that have prebiotics in the base ingredients um, that, that don't have a milligram listing. And this is one of those. So I wanna show you, because people get confused at what I mean by that. So I'm gonna show you. If you can see this, my finger said it's showing FOS. It's going in and out of focus a little bit, but this is in the base ingredients. It's not up here. It's in the other ingredients. So that means it's very small. If it's in a very small amount, it should be okay. So uh, probiotics are a fine thing to try. And one last category in the probiotics is the spore forming probiotics. So this is a one type, it's called Just Thrive. There's many different types. Like Megaspore, which we all also Megaspore. Love. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds. So the reason why it's, it's nice to mention three types of probiotics is because what can happen is um, 
a person tries a probiotic without a prebiotic and it bothers them. And then they think all probiotics bother me and I can't have them. And what Dr. Ruscio likes to make the point of is if you, if you understand these three categories, why don't you try one from another category? And very often clinically he finds that um, another category will be tolerated. So maybe the main uh, lactobacillus, acidophilus, bifidus one bothered a person, but Saccharomyces is tolerated. So I, I don't know, I think I showed that one before, but I just wanna be sure we, so, and remember the brand names here are not important. It's the, like the, the what's important here is Saccharomyces boulardii, um, that sort of thing. So um, I don't wanna to spend too much more time on this, but um, just one more thing I'll mention is digestive enzymes. They help a lot of people. And I happen to have a couple here with me. Here's one. Um, it's called Digest Gold. This is one in, available in most health, most health food stores. This is another one that was just sent to me as a sample. And this one is enzymes with probiotics. So again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that for somebody who's very sensitive reacting to everything because you're now mixing different things. But for most of us who are not sensitive, that's nice because you get two, two birds with one stone. So that's, that's just the, an idea there for what you can do in your first and second line therapies. So now I'm gonna share my screen again. I just, while you're doing that, I just wanna remind everybody, thank you for being here. We um, actually had a, we have our membership with Zoom where it maxes out at 500 people and I didn't realize that. So I'm really glad you came when you did because there are hundreds of people trying to get in right now and it's saying that the webinar is full. Oh no, Siobhan, is there something we need to do about that? I texted um, our team members and seeing if they can upgrade us in the middle of a webinar. I don't know, I'm sure this has happened to other people. Um, we, and I don't know, oh, I updated my Zoom. Carrie just has come in and was able to get in. Oh, so there's Zoom 5.0, That, but I also think Carrie, we might have also upgraded because it was a more expensive bump up. And so I think we just upgraded. Anyway, welcome if you guys just have been able to get in. If not, um, they're coming in now. So it looks like Cindy, no, it doesn't. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, I just want to say thanks for coming. One way or the other, people are coming in who we're trying to get in. So and, let me just. And me everyone's getting a recording. So just FYI, you're going to get a recording on your email. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. So, okay. So quick recap is what I was talking about there were first and second line therapies. And I was really talking about second line therapies that are supplements that are just common digestive sort of helpers that people can try. I talked about IgG. Um, the product I happened to show there was Mega IgG 2000. Um, I talked about bile. I, I showed integrative therapeutics lipotropic complex. Um, I showed um, bitters and I showed Quicks Quicksilver Scientific's uh, Bitter X. And um, I showed enzymes and probiotics. So um, also another place you can look for some of these is on my, um, let me show you, if you go to my website, which is SIBOinfo.com, it's a free educational resource for all of you. Here I am on my, if you go to resources, handouts, that's what this page is. And sorry, that, that these, uh, okay, here we go. Right here, SIBO symptomatic relief suggestions has a lot of these types of things I was just mentioning, the IgG. It doesn't have the bitters or the bile. Um, well, I think it has bitters on there, but it has a lot of these things I was just mentioning. You can download this handout for yourself. I mean, Siobhan had this thing laminated on, put on her cabinets, <laughs> for her kitchen cabinet. So she, if she was suffering, she'd immediately know, okay, I should take this, you know? So that is available for you there. So don't get too worried about, ah, I need a list. You know, you have a list there. Now let's move on. Let's say you've tried these things and um, they're just not giving you enough help. You know, they're, they're maybe helping you somewhat, but you know there's more to do. That's when it's time to get the breath test. So the breath test I recommend is a three hour, 10 tube, if possible, lactulose breath test. Um, I prefer lactulose over glucose. Now, glucose is, can be ordered by anyone. That's available to patients. However, there are a couple labs that do make lactulose breath tests available to patients for direct ordering. Let me actually go back to my website and show you. If you go to my website under resources testing, here we go, I list them here. Um, direct labs and true health labs are available for um, 
direct patient ordering. Here it is. So you yourself, as a patient listening, can order those. Now those those tests are um, from um, from a lab that's ordering. Uh, sorry, that's offering an eight tube test, which isn't my ultimate preference it's 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 still good it's still three hours it's you know it's giving you good information it's lactulose but it isn't um the best possible item so if you're you know by chance if you're a practitioner or if, if you if you're a patient listening and you have a practitioner that's willing to order you tests do try and get one from a lab like um like aerodiagnostics that does attend to uh full three-hour tests that's your optimal thing. But I don't want to make it out like, I mean, like the eight tube is still good information. So that's a key thing I want you to know, because what so many patients say is my doctor won't test me. So I wanted to be sure you knew that you actually can get the test yourself. Now, problem comes with what do you do about the um, interpretation? Um, hopefully you're working with a doctor that, uh, that knows about that. I believe I've taught some free webinars before on test interpretation. So, um, that's, that's an option, but testing's important. We need to know that you have SIBO before we're gonna wanna move on and give um, antimicrobials. So next would be antimicrobials. So briefly, the antibiotics that we use, are uh, the main ones are rifaximin, which is sold as um, Zyfaxan in the US. It's expensive, it's not always covered on insurance, but we do have um, some suggestions in our course of how you can get it more easily um, there's assistance programs and other things. Then if you, that's used if you have diarrhea. If you have the constipation type with methane present, either only methane positive or both hydrogen and methane positive, then you add to the rifaximin neomycin or metronidazole. And uh, again, I have this listed on my website and it's fully explained in the course. I just wanna be fairly brief here because I do wanna end in about within five minutes so we can take questions. The um, elemental diet, there are now many different commercial options available. When we started, there was just Vivinex Plus, which was unflavored, and it tastes very bitter and unpleasant, and it can be very difficult to take that uh, without flavoring. There were flavor packets back in the day, but now a lot of supplement companies have made elemental diets, which is wonderful. So some of the ones I can think of are um, Physician's Elemental Diet, and um, there's a new one, and I'm so sorry, I can't remember the name because it's new from um, the company that does a Vita Aid. They, uh, Vita Aid has one. Um, I believe the Physician's Elemental Diet and the one by Vita Aid, I think you have to get them through a practitioner. But Dr. Ruscio has one, a new one now. He's always had a semi elemental diet out that he calls Elemental Heal. Um, but he has a new one, and it's called. Um, Oh, I, I, Siobhan, I can't remember the name of Dr. Ruscio's new full elemental diet. It's um, it's Elemental Heal. If you go to our like, website, you can even grab a coupon for it. But it's Elemental Heal. And then when you get there, there are four kinds. It's like, one of them. One of them. There's element. There's semi-elementals, and then there's full elementals. And if you so go, sorry, I don't remember the name. <laughs> It's, it's just that it's, it's so new. It came out just like, you know, a month, a month and a half ago. And I, I put it in my newsletter. Somebody will probably, no one can type it into the chat group. So um, anyway, they're now, all of these are flavored. And another one that's flavored is Neo Kate Jr. And by the way, if you, if you just go to my website under treatments, elemental diet, you'll see all these brand names. See, I should have just said that, right? And I have them linked over for you. So um, elemental diet is another thing we do. Now, pharmaceutical antibiotics and elemental diet they, uh, they, their course of treatment is about two weeks. We can also go three weeks if a person has high gas, which we would see on the test. What is high gas? You know, getting in above 55 parts per million or higher. Why that matters is because each treatment round lowers gas on average about 30 parts per million. This information is absolute gold, by the way, because when you know that, you can now calculate and project about how many rounds you think you might need. So, um, so if a person has like 70 parts per million gas, you know you're gonna need more than one treatment round, probably. So uh, then you might want to extend your treatment to say three weeks, something like that. Now, let's move to the next one, which is herbal antibiotics. So there, um, there's two ways you can approach this. There are combination herbal antibiotic formulas that every supplement company has. 
So like pretty much any brand that you would look at has an herbal antibiotic type formula, a killing type formula. Usually there are many items in here and they're focusing not just on bacteria, but also on yeast like candida, which is also called fungus and parasites and maybe even viruses. They're just, you know, killing, killing strategies, right? And many people use those. Uh, some that were studied for SIBO are uh, like biotics, uh, had Epsicidal and dysbiocide. They're used together, four tablets a day of each. I did not love those. I did not find them that successful. I found them successful for a patient that didn't respond to the typical stuff. So more typical would be the other formula that was studied, which was Metagenics, um, Candybactin AR and BR. Uh, I, I prefer those as a starting place if you're going to use combinations. But what um, most of us do, a lot of us doctors do, is we use single herbs and we just use two herbs at a time. So we'll pick from berberine, uh, berberine type herbs. And there are products called like berberine complex or just you know berberine 500 or they'll have the name berberine. And um, oregano, that's another one. And neem, N-E-E-M. These are our three main herbs will choose from to target the hydrogen producers. But if somebody has methane, then we add to that allicin, which is the antibacterial aspect of ingredient in garlic that's been purified. We don't use whole garlic or garlic oil because garlic is very fermentable. It has a lot of FOS, one of the prebiotics, and it bothers a lot of people. So we try and use more of the purified allicin. And um, I brought over some products I have in my cabinet. Um, one product is called Alimed. The same product goes under the name Alimax Pro. Hold on, let me stop sharing. So this is one version, Alimax Pro. It's also sold as Alimed. And another one is this um, Allison Sap. Allison Sap is a half the potency per pill of Alimax Pro. So I tend to prefer this one. You'll, you'll see that the Al, Al, um, Allison Sap is cheaper because it's half the potency. So you have to take double the amount of capsules. We usually take six of these a day. You need to take 12 of this one, 12 caps. So that's why, uh, it, uh, now, by the way, I, that's the dosing I give. I mean, it's possible you could go a little, a little lower. Um, but you know, if you're trying to save money or something like that, but generally it's six a day or 12 a day. About. So we add that if somebody has the um, methane type, and then this is the other option you could use, a Trontil. Uh, Siobhan, you, you usually have some coupons available for a lot of these products. We have the lowest price anyone can buy a Trontil for. Thank you, Allison, for that reminder. I've gone to these, many of the manufacturers and said, listen, my community, our community needs your help, and they've given us discounts. So the Autron Teal, we have the lowest price in the world, actually, and you can find that coupon code to go to. It's a special page on the bottom of your emails that you're getting from us. And also, it's in the Facebook group. It's also at um, SIBOSOS.com, the name of our website. Okay, you, do you currently have a coupon going with... Um... With Kieran, with um, microbiome. We also have fifteen percent off for um, patient direct ordering for Megaspore probiotic. You use patient direct code SIBO SOS, and then your first order fifteen percent off is big. That is a code digestion SOS. And then also for Alimed, we have twenty percent off. That's also a huge discount, and that is um, again on the bottom of the emails that you're getting. So. Thank you. Very important. And from uh, Microbiome Labs, they have the probiotic and they have the IgG. And the and IgG is just back in stock. Did you see that? No, I didn't know it was out of stock. It was, yeah. Okay, so that's your killers, okay? Now, diet, I'm not going to talk about it all today, um, but I have multiple uh, lectures on that. You have extensive lectures on that in the SRR course. And also, I have pages of you know information and links on my website, SIBOinfo.com. So after, um, after you do the killing, it's recommended to, when you're finished with that course, get on a prokinetic. Uh, there are pharmaceutical prokinetics. Uh, a very, very good one is quercalipride. Um, and actually, let me just briefly, I'm gonna stop sharing and show you. Here's, I happen to have this. Um, so quercalipride is sold as Resitran. It's also sold as Resilor, depending on the country. And it's now come to the US under the name 
um, Motegrity. Is that correct? Do I, did I get that right? It's, it's so new. It's like a year old. Hard to get on insurance right now in the U.S., uh, because it's new. That often happens. Some people are getting it covered. So uh, often we will order through, um, we'll have patients order through Canadian pharmacies to get it as Wrestlelor from like the UK or something like that. And other options would be, yeah, go ahead, Siobhan. I just wanted to um, say that I used to get it from Canada too, but there's a good coupon that if your insurance takes it, the rest, the Motegrity was like $15 for me. I was very blessed. I felt lucky that day, but there is a coupon. So always search for those coupons just out online. Of, you're just online from the manufacturer. Okay. Um, I can't remember who's manufacturing it in the U.S., Motegrity. I did know. I don't know. It might be Novartis. Google. It's a Google. Just Google. All right. So um, there are two other pr uh, prescription prokinetics. That's prescription. One is low-dose erythromycin. And oh, by the way, I didn't say the amount you take. You usually take it at a half milligram, the percalipride. It's lower dose than normal. Okay, so for our purposes, we use low dose. And this can, prokinetics can be taken by diarrhea or constipation patients. They're a low dose. And what they're doing is stimulating the migrating motor complex in the small intestine because the majority of people who have SIBO, uh, SIBO have it because their migrating motor complex is not working well and they've had stagnation because of that. This is the main sort of movement in the small intestine that clears bacteria away. Okay, so uh, next would be erythromycin. And uh, this is an antibiotic, but at low dose, it doesn't work as an antibiotic. It works as a prokinetic. It's quite specific. It needs to be at the low dose. The dose is either 50 milligrams or 60 milligrams. You can um, get it compounded or you can cut a large pill into quarters and get about 60 milligrams. And the third prescription is LDN, low dose naltrexone. Siobhan loves this. It's used for many, many things. It's anti-inflammatory. It helps with pain. It helps with allergies. It helps with autoimmune diseases. It helps with depression. If you don't have any of those things, it's you can still take it. Um, and it, it's not technically a prokinetic but it has a prokinetic effect. And usually we start this at low dose, uh, like a half milligram or one milligram, and we slowly titrate it up to about four milligrams or five milligrams. Uh, we titrate it up slowly because there is a side effect for some people of vivid dreams, sleep disturbance, or insomnia, those sorts of things. Bringing it up slowly just minimizes that. You want to say anything about LDN? I, I, I... I mean, it's like when you fall in love with a movie star or like a favorite song or a, I just, I have a crush on it because it made such a difference. I've had psoriasis in my scalp for years. It cleared it, which is like practically unheard of. Um, I took away my fibromyalgia. I didn't even take it for the benefit of the mild prokinetic. I ended up doing it for all those other things. Um, and I mean, when I say I had fibromyalgia, I was in pain every single day and had, you know, shots, cortisone shots, all this jazz. So here's the thing. I had to try it three times. I want to recommend that you go to the LDN Research Trust, I think, .org. Google it. There's a phenomenal, phenomenal organization teaching people about low-dose naltrexone. If you are on an opioid prescription medicine, it will not work for you. Do not take it. It is um, counter to that. Find out about it. I'm telling you, if you have systemic pain, you need to know about it. Back to you, Dr. Seebecker. Okay, so LDN is a prescription again. It's just called LDN. If you Google LDN, you'll see everything you need to know. That's the one that's anti-inflammatory. Um, so, and, and I saw people asking questions like spell it and everything. Um, you, you just Google it. You know? um, and, you know, for procalipride, Motegrity, you could just type in Motegrity. Okay, now for, for people who cannot get their hands on the prescriptions, their doctors won't give it to them, there are natural items that are over the counter. And these are either gonna be ginger root, iberogast, or ginger containing prokinetic items. So iberogast, um, we mostly get this from Amazon, and this is what it looks like. I happen to have some in the house. It's a liquid. Uh, here's what the bottle looks like. It's just a liquid bottle. And uh, like I said, um, I get it from Amazon. I think there's a couple other sites you can get it from. It's not the cheapest anymore. And, you know, I think it tastes good. Siobhan thinks it tastes really bad. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it tastes lovely. <laughs> we definitely have different taste profiles. However, yeah. 
if you watch the course, you will see that I actually take some of it live with mm -hmm. or on recording with Dr. Seebecker and because I was not feeling well that day and I felt better by the time we were done recording. It was, it works. It definitely does work. Um, if you, there's, if you're on opioids, I think that's also um, counter indicated. Um, someone wrote me that as a reminder. So I wanted to mention it. However, listen, if you can get it, if you can get it, know that even if it has Russian, typing on it, you know, the print is Russian, right, Dr. Seebecker? So we get this question a lot. Uh, sometimes. I've gotten it with Russian writing, uh, writing and, and this, my ones right now don't. My ones are all in English. It just comes from various sources, but it's the same thing. Thanks. Yeah, so um, the, uh, the, some of the um, ginger-containing prokinetics, I, I have these all listed uh, on my site. Again, of course, we go fully in-depth into this in the course, but I happen to have this one was sent to me as a sample. This is a very nice one, Prokine. It's by Vita Aid. And I happen to have another one here that's only available in the UK, bio.me.kinetic, um, from in vivo labs. So um, let's go back to the, um, here's what we're talking about. You take a prokinetic soon after stopping your treatment. So I would say start that within one or two days after finishing your treatment. And then you want to figure out how you're doing. Assess. If you're 90% better, you can move on to prevention. Um, prevention includes doing some kind of low carbohydrate SIBO diet, which could now at this point be more expanded. It doesn't need to be as strict because hopefully you're, you're better now. You're not, not having as many symptoms. And um, also the prokinetics that I just mentioned, vitally important for the prevention phase, okay? This is what's missing in a lot of people's prevention phase. That's why I wanted to mention about the prokinetic. Vitally important in between rounds because you don't wanna backslide while you're assessing, figuring out what's going on, getting another test. If you go on the prokinetic, it helps hold the gains you've made. If once you're all the way better, it still helps hold the gains you've made of getting better. And something else we really like to recommend is meal spacing. This can be started at any point, right in the beginning. This is leaving four or five hours between meals, no snacking and no drinking of caloric beverages or sweetened beverages. Um, basically just give a, a time of fasting between meals to allow for the migrating motor complex to work. We do this prevention phase for about three months and, and then we can start phasing it out if everything's going well and hopefully there's no relapse, right? So this would be, this is the proper fabulous scenario. What happens a lot of the times over here is that someone's partially better, they're not all the way better yet. They're, you know, 50% better, 60% better, 70% better. So at that point, I like to retest and I would recommend that test is taken within two weeks of finishing this killing treatment. Um, so it could be immediately after you finish, it could be day one, two, three, four, all the way up to day 14. But by, by two weeks, that's when a lot of people are starting to backslide and relapse on their symptoms because they're not done treating. Like imagine if you did, now this is, SIBO is not technically an infection, but imagine you had um, an infection like uh, let's say urinary tract infection and you took three days of antibiotics and stopped. You were feeling great. You stopped. You know how it will just start to come back. You're not finished with your course of antibiotics, right? So uh, that's sort of what's happening here. And what you might be asking is why can't we just be on the antibiotics, the elemental diet, the herbal antibiotics, you know, for like weeks and weeks and weeks, like, or, you know, two months or three months until it's all the way gone. Look, if that's working for you, you could technically, Problem is it, the effect seems to peter out for most people. It, it's like it stops working even while you're on them and then you begin to have symptoms back. And so we lose effect after some period in most people. If you're not losing effect, you can continue, but we lose effect and so we stop after some time and assess what's going on and how is the person now that they're off. So um, this is where now you use the next retest, the breath test, to find out, are you still positive? Has the test come down? What's going on? We use the test to inform our treatment, just like we do up here. And if, if it's still positive, we retreat and we go through and we do multiple rounds till we're done. So that's pretty much it. Siobhan, did you want to interject anything here? Nice job, Dr. C. Becker, as always. Um, this course, the course is 36 lessons and 
every single little square there is broken down, including about the timing of the testing, also about how to work with your doctor if your doctor is not open to possibilities that SIBO even exists. Um, lots of cooking classes and um, Q and A's. So in this particular offering, and uh, actually the um, Zoom room is now open, so more people are coming in. So welcome. Sorry, we didn't realize that our uh, Zoom account had a cap. Um, this is the nine steps that Dr. Seebecker is describing here that leads to successful SIBO treatments, including working on funding, finding your underlying cause. Every single one of those is a lesson within the SIBO Recovery Roadmap course. And if you're interested in coming and taking it with us, great. It also includes a live Q&A. And as a bonus, you also are getting the most recent exclusive research update from Dr. Mark Pimentel that Dr. Seebecker and I recorded with him this week. DDW Digestive Disease Week didn't happen. Um, I had a standing appointment with him, thank goodness, to record him with updates. We did it from Zoom from his office at Cedar sinai and it was very interesting. Wasn't it interesting, Dr. C. Becker? It was amazing. I mean, he's always amazing. You know, I, I'm just astounded. There are people that go like, oh, I don't know if anybody says this about Dr. Pimento, but I hear often people go and listen to classes and they go, I didn't learn anything. And I'm like, really? Because I'm considered an expert and I learn things every time. <laughs> like Dr. Pimento, this is, I mean, that probably wasn't a good example because he's giving, he's talking about new research. How could you not learn something? It's all new research. It's right. amazing. <laughs> Didn't exist before he did it. Um, so anyway, that's what you'll also receive. You also are getting a hundred dollars off right now if you are interested in this um, because we're doing a semester launch and are you ready? I feel really bad, Allison, that we maxed out this Zoom room. So I was going to turn off the camera and give the people who attended live the following $50 off coupon. If you use code word today in the checkout page, but because our Zoom room maxed out, have at it. If you've watched the recording until now, thank you. Bless you. You deserve that extra $50 off. So that is the lowest price we've ever done this course for. Um, so that would make it, uh, I think it's like 149, something like that. Um, so I just, I just need to say that I, that's, look, I don't know what everybody's financial situation is. So I'm saying that, right. But that is incredibly inexpensive. It, it's like half the price of one appointment with me. And it's like six hours of me explaining everything I would ever explain in, in an appointment to somebody. So it's, it's unbelievable priced. I mean, really, Siobhan, I think it's kind of insane. <laughs> it, it, it is kind of insane. Obviously the economy around the world has changed right now. And we definitely want to support that. I think we're doing payments. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Um, but check it out when you check out. I think we are doing payments so that people can, you know, manage the cash flow. And Carlene, who's a regular, um, thanks, Carlene, for everything you do for this community. Yes, you get the update. So if you have bought the course in the past, you will receive the newest update from Dr. Mark Pimentel because you were there before and we promised that we were going to give everybody updates and we're delivering and um so if anybody's here just enjoying the webinar and you already signed up for the class you do get that um i also wanted to say that if you get this now in the future you'll get the future updates which we periodically do you know we we're very conscientious okay we really care and words are cheap action is more <laughs> expensive <laughs> and more important. So you'll see that we really do care. We're not perfect. Sometimes we mess up and you let us know and we try to fix it. But really, we are very, very devoted to, um, to helping you. A little confused on the difference in my email. I only see the patient course and your practitioner. Okay, Ramona, hey, you want to go to the bottom of the email where it says SIBO Pro Course, click on that. And that is different. That is for practitioners. It does not have the $50 off for the practitioner discount. You can email us and see if we can work that out for you if you are interested in signing up for the SIBO Pro course. I think we could do that, Dr. Seebecker, don't you? Oh, please. Anybody, any practitioner who's here, I would love to have you join my practitioner course. It's a um, certified by AAFP. It's got continuing medical education, 20 hours. It's a 22-hour. It's a full professional training course. 
I would love for you to join. I mean, it's like, that just thrills me. Of course, we will, we'll, we'll offer you a discount for you being here it's today. It's not set up yet though. We're going to have to go do that. So, <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to do that this afternoon. If you've got the SIBO SOS docu-series, the digestion SOS, I want to thank you for that. Um, we just had an incredible launch during, you know, the past, I think it wrapped up last week, um, during a very difficult time. And we still saw a huge response and so many thousands of people watched it. So I wanted to say thank you for that. That was highly discounted as well. Like, I don't even want to think about how expensive it was to make that over two years. To be able to buy it at the prices that you bought that was terrific. And we wanted to also extend this discount for you, whether you watch that or not, to uh, the $150 off for today if you use coupon code today. Because the Zoom room was locked by accident, Anybody who's watching this that gets this far in the recording, use coupon code today. Um, we don't know how long we're going to keep that available, but probably till tomorrow. So that was sort of the special for, you know, celebrating today being the launch. If you are interested in the recording here um, and you're live with us, yes, we will email it to you. And you already have received the PDF of the protocol, by the way. We sent that out in one of the very first emails. So we will. Um, see about adding it to another email for you because we do want to over deliver on the free stuff as well like right now we are at an hour in this webinar please take advantage of this opportunity this is everything i wish i had known at the very beginning of my SIBO journey i actually wish i had known this before i even knew i had SIBO. right mm -hmm.